The Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Mr. Festus Kayamo, SAN, is shaking things up in the aviation space as he has read the Riot Act to aviation agencies vying to review subsisting contracts in the sector and cancel obsolete ones. Kayamo also threatened to sack the heads of aviation agencies who may not meet up with the key performance index, KPI, of the government. The minister also said he would rather sack chief executives of the aviation agencies under his ministry than lose his own job. Kayam also directed the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, NCA, to provide daily reports of flight delays across all airports in the country on a daily basis. He spoke in Lagos at a one-day stakeholders meeting, the first to be held since he assumed office. According to him, some of the contracts for the installation of safety and navigational equipment entered into by some of the agencies, especially the Nigerian Xpace Management Agency, were obsolete and wondered how the country signed and continued with such agreements. Joining us now to discuss the Minister of Aviation's latest directive is the Chief Executive Officer of United Nigeria Airlines, Obiora Okonkwo. Welcome to the morning show, Mr. Okonkwo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Doc. I'm glad to be here. Hello, good morning. Did you hear me? Thank you very much. I am, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I'm happy to be here. We are very good. Thank you for joining us. Quickly, uh, the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development has read the Riot Act uh, to the agencies under its uh, watch, NCA, NAMA, and all the other agencies. He says, the president says, look, if you don't perform, you will be sacked as minister, which was uh, one of the major outcomes of the ministerial retreat. And he too has taken that message down the line to say, well, he doesn't want to be sacked and he will not allow anybody to, uh, to get him sacked. So <laughs> people down the line should also perform. But there is a part that concerns uh, the airlines, which is this point about delay of flights, cancellation of flights, to the dismay of the average uh, uh, air traveler uh, along the domestic, on the domestic airlines. What do you think of the minister's charge and how does this charge affect owners of airlines directly? Yes, thank you, Doc. Um, I was live at that stakeholders meeting in Lagos. And um, indeed, Mr. President, uh, the minister was very, very clear that um, he would rather, you know, sack his, um, his heads of agencies and losing his job. That gladdened my heart because um, for the first time in a very long time, we are seeing a situation where government wants to hold somebody responsible for their actions or inactions because there must be consequences for failures and obviously corresponding reward for, for success. So <clears throat> um, as of the announcement for the need for NCA to publish the list and details of uh, the flight delays, it is actually to the best interest of the operators because the whole intention is for the traveling public to know why there are delays and who is responsible because we, part of the agreement to reach at that stakeholders meeting is that let these delays be published. Actually, it's not daily, it should be weekly moving forward, but let the reasons for the delay be made known because we are aware that 95% of the reasons for the delay is outside the, the capacity or, or the reasons for which from, for, from the operators. We listed all those things in that stakeholders meeting. So we are happy that there will be this information made available to the public and not only making this information up, uh, available to the public about the delay, the public should also be educated or enlightened on their own right, because as much as there are rights to the traveling public, there are also rules that they must have to obey, because um, we do see a whole lot of unruly passengers who are uh, going beyond the, the, the actions, you know, when they find a situation of flight delays, because no matter what you do, Doc, flight delays 
innovation is there. The only thing we need to, is there in America, is there in other parts of the world, but the only thing we are trying to work on is to ensure that things that we have to do to minimize it. And we emphasize particularly as we are coming to the yellow tooth season, very soon now, uh, you'll be hearing about flight delays due to bad weather in Asaba, Hamatan weather in Lagos, and so on and so forth. So um, these are the things that the minister has taken note of, and we are aware that he's going into action to make sure this, um, these changes are made. But we are happy to operate us with this development. We are happy that we have a minister who is conscious about all these problems and ready to work with the stakeholders to make sure um, they are solved. More importantly, holding the agencies responsible to do what they have to do. So I, I'd like to ask you, what really constitutes this delay? What role does the airline play in them? And let's talk about reporting times for these delays. Well, you know, uh, Useni, in our cow list, there are about 90-something reasons that could lead to delay. And out of these 90-something reasons, probably about five of them could be attributed to the operators. And the only reason there could be is that if you have an AOG, AOG is that if you have an indication of any fault in the aircraft, for safety reasons, you must have to clear this before you take off. It may not be that there is a problem, but this is a business nobody wants to take a chance because of life that is involved. But beyond that, the rest of the reasons are from the operators. I mean, from the, from the weather, from the from lack of infrastructure, and all that. You might find out that 90% of the time for the delay, you might look out across the window and you see the aircraft parked there. The aircraft is parked there because it's trying to check the weather in the next destination. And this weather is bad. And by the rule, you check on hourly basis. Two, three hours might be gone, the crew are there, the aircrafts are parked, and you can't take off. It could be a VIP movement. You might be coming into Lagos or taking off from Abuja. There is a VIP movement. They don't announce, they don't give you notice in advance because of security reasons. You are hovering over and above just to get cleared. And as soon as that is done, there is already heavy traffic. And then even if the delay is just 30, 45 minutes, because of the accrued traffic that within that period, it might take the next two hours. We've talked about weather. In most part of the world, aircrafts land on zero, zero visibility. But here in Nigeria, you have to count on about 2,000 visibility to be able to land because the facilities are not working. We raised the issue. That's what is called ILS. ILS gives you clear indications on the tarmac. But you see, most of the airports have ILS. But they are not calibrated. They have been paid for. So when you look at, when you hear the minister talking about mundane equipment, it's one of them. Do you know that some of these airports do not have lights? So most of the times you have to use your eyes to land. These are very, very simple things, but they are causing a whole lot of operational issues. Unruly passengers, you could, you may have been boarded, the door closed, and then somebody refuses to put his or her bag in the right place, and because of the rule, you just can't live without that bag being where it has to be. There is a disagreement, there is a fight, and then two, three hours, you are dealing with the situation because if you have to disembark the passenger, the crew will have to go back to the security post and give a report. Three hours is gone. So you can go on and on and on. So, and then you are taking off in the morning, you've loaded. Then there's a ramp check, which is done by NCA. That ramp check is on, you know, uninformed uh, check to know how things are going in operations. That's two, three hours. But more importantly, you are coming into an airport like Lagos, 
There could be traffic, the facilities, the parking space is very low. I tell you one story that will shock you. There was one time, sometime last year, we had landed in Asaba Airport, United Nigeria, Airbus 320. In that Asaba Airport at that time, I think the situation may have changed now. The next in queue was Airpix. The next in queue was was Aero. United Nigeria landed with Airbus. They have only one step to take in passengers. They had to take us. So the process of taking down United Passengers Airport uh, 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 at the airport and loading them or boarding them will take you about one hour. So the, the last, then the passengers in Airpix were in the aircraft for one hour waiting. And then the passengers in Aero were queued behind on ground waiting for two hours for the airport because they can't get that. <laughs> These simple things you might never imagine. And when these things are happening at one station, it's affecting your entire schedule. And then sometimes you are faced with the issue of flight cancellations. Why do you cancel? Part of the things we made a very strong request about with the minister was that why should we have airport and we can't fly into this airport as long as we want? from 6.30 to 12 midnight or even 24 hours. Because aircrafts are manufactured to fly. We are underutilizing the equipment who have paid huge money to bring into Nigeria. As a matter of fact, a typical aircraft should fly 18 hours out of 24 hours in a day. But here we only fly in eight hours. And do you know why? Because that's what is called sunset in the airport and sunrise. That means you can't start operation before 6.30 and 80% of the airports, apart from the international airports like Abuja, Kanu, Lagos, Potako to some extent, you only can close by 6.30 or with special arrangement that could cost you a huge amount of money, fly beyond 6.30. So in that case, the airlines squeeze their operations to get a minimum of what we call eight circles in a day, at least to break even on that airport, I mean on that flight. With that eight circles, we are forced to be doing a turnaround within 30 minutes. Because you have turnaround 30 minutes, which gives you 12 hours. So when that is done, at any slightest delay, then you're already overshooting the 6.30 time. And then what happens? You, ha you don't have to go to that airport. You have aircraft, you have crew, but you cannot land. Then you cancel. And you know, in, any, in, any, in all of these things, the only thing the passengers know is to blame and hit on the operator. So when the minister had said they have to announce this delay, it is not really, it is to the best interest of the operators. We are happy with it, we demanded for it, we are going to show the cooperation that is needed. So these are the little things and there are a lot more, you know. But I can tell you that, um, we, uh, with the minister, with his initiative, we are working together and uh, we're going to partner for the, best, for the best service to the traveling public and then the growth of our national economy. Well, I get all the points you've made about what causes uh, flight delays and the fact that you are restricted in terms of uh, flight time. But the minister has given his own charge and as a stakeholder uh, within the industry, uh, what will be your specific charge? First, to the heads of those agencies, uh, just in case you have observed it's an agency that is not uh, paying attention to certain details, because that's a concern of the minister. And then what the minister himself needs to do from the ministry end to make the work of the agencies easier. Because it, it can't just be one way. It can't be the headmaster coming to say, I've given you this charge. He too must play his part. What should he do as the minister? Yes, as the minister, there is a need for him to intervene less in the activities of the agencies. The agencies, by the law establishing them, is not Nigerian law, it's international aviation law under the auspices of ICAO. They have to operate without interference from the government or from the ministry. Obviously, minimum oversight is also very important. 
So we made that demand with the minister that they must have to be allowed to operate. We had also informed them, and we agreed in that stakeholders meeting, that NCA has to be the master, the master agency amongst the rest of the agencies, uh, FAN, NAMA, NIMET, and so on and so forth. Before none, they were being taken at the same level. So the agencies, if they will be able to report to NCA, NCA will oversight the agencies, and then the minister should now get his information from NCA. That's the way it's done in other parts of the world. But it has not been so in Nigeria, and it has been affecting certain um, ability of NCA to oversight them. We agreed in that stakeholders meeting that it will be so. And I have no doubt that um, in the further retreat the minister has announced they are having this, this, this week, they will come out with strong statements about that, and then the implementation, we hope, will be smooth. When that is done, we are going to see a whole lot of improvement because NCA, by the act establishing them, has oversight functions over the rest of the agencies. Then on the side of the NCA, we are, our charge to them is that, yes, we are acknowledging the past they have had some problems of having the right uh, team to work, you know, the knowledge, <laughs> you know, and um, if, if you had followed the report uh, from that stakeholders meeting, the DGNC, you know, is 62 years, and he told us he's the youngest person at the highest rank of the agency decision making at 62. What that tells you is that the rest of the people are already towards 70s and above in their retired age. It is a very, very, uh, not the, the best age to, to face the challenges of that agency. And the reason is because the agency has been kept a certain salary scale. And with that salary scale measured with the others, they are not able to attract the best hands in the industry. The best of the hands are working with the private um, sector that pay even 10 times more than the, the agency is paying. We have agreed that something has to be done about that. And as soon as that is done, they will be able to bring in the right people to be able to do the job that they need to do. Otherwise, um, it would be a very big problem. On the side of farm, uh, we had also agreed that farm, farm is overburdened with so much responsibilities. So there should be a process of unbundling farm. And probably there were suggestions which are still under consideration that, um, that in the bundling there could be multiple companies that might be coming out of farm. You know, that's on the table. I will not reveal it until the minister himself takes a decision on that. So these are part of the things um, we, are, we are expecting to happen very soon. Uh, the minister is serious about them. And when that happens, that will be a big revolution okay. in the sector. And we have no doubt that it will be of mutual benefit both to the operators okay. and then the regulators. Okay. And at the end of the day, the credit will go to the minister and the government of the day. Okay. Uh, a lot of Nigerians are concerned about your industry. What is happening? We saw another near crash situation that could have taken the life of a serving minister <coughs> in this country <coughs> in Ibadan. What would you like to say about the episode? Well, um, we, one thing I can assure Nigerians is that our aviation industry is the safest in the world. Very, very safe. It, the records are there. In the last 10 years, I, can, I, don't, I don't have to talk before them from all the statistics available. And as a matter of fact, when you, have to, when you come to aviation safety, from the Aikawa recent audit of NCA, Nigeria was scoring 90-something percent over and above many countries of the world. I don't think there is any African country that has more than 30 percent score. That we must have to. And then you have five Nigerian operators, including United Nigeria, that have Aikawa certification. Aikawa certification is just certificate of safety. They audit you, 
That is the standard of safety in all over the world. I don't think there are many countries, there are more than two, three countries all over the world that have that number of, of, um, of, uh, of, re of, of certified uh, operators. So this is one assurance I have to give you. What happened in Ibada Airport happens in most parts of the world, and nobody even talks about it. In such an incident in aviation world, it means nothing skidding out of the airport, but it could be avoidable. Well, nothing to do with the technical situation of the aircraft. It has nothing to do with the fault of the, of the, of the crew. It has to do with the facility. But there are you know, talks there, about there, certification. There was a visibility issue. There are talks about certification. I, I beg pardon? There are talks about certification and licensing. Yes. You know, there are talks about certification and licensing yes. that there was, there was no enough licensing, you know, for the airline as regards, you know, the private use airline or to be used commercially for private, you know, charter and things like that. There's been that talk back and forth as regards licensing. So a lot of people are, you know, aghast as regards what's happening. And recently you also saw many revelations that came out as regards <coughs> water in the tank and all of that. So these are the things that are raising concerns by a lot of people. Uh, yes, these are quite unfortunate situations uh, with regards to water. I think that um, the necessary authorities went straight into that, and there are a lot of things that are being done to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, but in terms of licensing, I don't think so. Um, there's nobody who will get on board to fly without proper licensing. In fact, NCA, we do say sometimes overregulate. They are very tough. Uh, and it's not like the same part of what happens in other parts of the world. That should be a wrong notion. Anybody who is flying here has a right certification and is being properly regulated. So the incident in Minibado, if I have to go back to it briefly, simply has to do with lighting in that airport. There is no light. The, uh, the captain has to land with his eye view, seeing the tarmac from his cockpit. Those things are not good. And then, obviously, weather in a bad weather situation, it's not going to help anything. You know, you might have to come at a time when it's raining, and then there is there is pool of water at the tarmac. You know, which should not be so. You know, it should not really be so. There is pool of water, and then when you land, it slips and skids. You know, skidding is not really an accident. It's like you have landed, and then something slipped. You just like you are walking. They are walking on the, on the ground and then there is something wet on the floor and then you are, it slips you, you know, that's really what it is. And then when it, if it happens within a close range to the end of the tarmac, then that's when you skid outside the tarmac. Otherwise, it's really not a major issue in aviation world. So that should not be anything to worry about. But I think that if the light, if the facilities at the airport uh, are all in place, it will reduce this process because the, 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 crew, the crew will see a lot more. But you see, for every report, every incident, there is AIB report. And when that report is, is, is published, you will find out that it has nothing to do with incapacity of the crew or uh, state of the aircraft. Nothing in that uh, has happened recently. So it's just about circumstantial issue, which can easily be overcome. And that's the need for all this concern and the action coming from the minister side, which we really, really uh, are happy about. Well, so the traveling public do not have to worry. I would like to ask you about the cost of uh, flight tickets. There's been a hike of uh, almost over 100%. Yeah. Um, you want to go to Abuja these days, a return uh, a ticket could cost uh, <coughs> an arm and a, and a leg. But you were quoted once as saying, well, this has to do with the forex and all of that. But the Naira, you know, over the weekend has appreciated against uh, the dollar. So when there is improvement like that, <laughs> are we likely to see flight tickets, you know, uh, coming down? Would uh, airline operators be kind enough to say, well, forex is not so difficult anymore, so we're reducing uh, <laughs> tickets? Instead of this, you ask for the flight ticket in the morning. By afternoon, if you don't buy quickly, they will say it has gone up. 
Where, how do you calculate this percentage <laughs> rise in the cost of flight tickets? <laughs> Dr. Ruben, this improvement in the, in the rate just happened over the weekend. We're happy about that and we are looking forward that it should be sustained moving forward. But the immediate relief that we give you is that you might not see a continuous increase in the ticket rate. But for it to change overnight, we had said over and over again that for all the flights that we've been making since January this year, it's been subsidized by the operators. And for the reason that the, cheap, the cost of operating here is very high. We don't have access to cheap phones and any slightest change in all these um, monetary issue affects us. And you can be changing prices every day, every minute, and all that. So what happens is that we have been waiting and praying and hoping that there will be change in the rate of, uh, of the forex. But it was not coming. And then gradually there was a progressive, uh, a progressive uh, uh, change in the cost of uh, uh, ticket. So what I can tell you is that, you see, if you price your ticket in the morning and it rises in the afternoon, it's not, we don't do like that. There must have been a situation where, like in every, any part of the world, if, if, the seat, if the number of seats in that aircraft has gone to a certain percentage and you are buying late on your travel day, then that's the only way it will affect you. We don't change our tickets like the cost of uh, forex. You know, the forex like changes like you are, you you have one rate in one hour, the next hour uh, is it, changing. So, Dr. Robert, please, <laughs> I, think I was laughing because that looks like uh, you are buying buying ticket is not like buying forex. That's not the case because you have procedure you have to go through before you change prices. So, our hope. Let me tell you one thing. Um, uh, uh, Ruben, and I want the people to understand that. A typical operator doesn't make money from the from high cost of ticket. What you what is important in any flight is the the number of passengers that you have on that flight and the average rate of ticket because for every flight that takes off from Lagos to Abuja or anywhere, there is cost for every seat, cost per seat. So it pays us to have a full flight at certain affordable price. So we know that the higher the prices, the less the passengers. So if I sell an economy ticket for 200,000 Naira, and in, in my A320 that has about 160, 160 passenger capacity, and I carry 20, 30 passengers, I'm at a huge loss. I would rather want to sell it at 70 or 75,000 Naira and carry full passenger. But yet, there is a cost. Don't forget that when we're talking about, you're only talking about the cost of, of, uh, of, of Forex. We still have to deal with the cost of aviation fuel, which is now over 1,000 Naira. We still have to deal with cost of funds, which is now 25, 26% and above. Aviation, we have been saying, is a critical sector in this country, as is treated in all parts of the world. There is a single digit loan for agriculture. There's a single digit loan for, uh, for, uh, um, for power. There's a single digit loan for, for uh, other critical areas. And then there is huge subsidy for the land transport. It's all means of transport. We are saying that as soon as the government will recognize the position of aviation, as a catalyst to economic development in this country and giving it the attention it desires. And we have access to this thing. We're not asking for free money. That's not the issue. Access to single digit loan. All these things together will aggregate and make uh, our operation easier. And then we need access to this forex. Because now we are talking about the rate of this forex. It's not just about going down. Have we access to it? You know, the aviation is a highly regulated industry all over the world. All eyes on aviation. For every person who is in aviation here, you must have gone through serious KYC with your partners and vendors all over the world. They don't expect us to wake up one morning 
and start paying money into the account from any source. It has to come from official source. That official source we don't have. So we think that we are, uh, with all these things, and we, therefore the minister is making, and then working with his colleagues in other ministries, finance, and other agencies, and they come out with something, a roadmap that will ease this operation. Um, the passengers will, will benefit. We feel the blunt. We are, we are the bigger loser. I can tell you, Doc. We are the, the operators are losing more from the high cost of the ticket. But I also know, and you should know, that uh, even the, the costs you pay from car hire coming from the airport to town this time in the last six months has maybe become three or four times. So if in your own reckoning, aviation is double, that's still very cons considerate and, and fair. But we, don't, we just have to pray that it will not go higher because, because we don't have free funds. We cannot sustain or bear the cost. We, we bear losses, honestly. No, when I say we bear losses within a period, it is it's a fact. But we can only be able to do that for a very long time. We have pool funds. And then because your operational funds is being eaten into with the cost of, uh, with the cost of uh, Forex, then it becomes very hard for us to bear. Well, on that so note, we are hoping that um, as, as, yeah. Well, I was just going to thank you very much for joining us uh, today on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Biora Okonkwo, CEO, United Nigeria Airlines. Thank you.